Good afternoon. Start na tayo with our lecture. Okay, so for today, I will be discussing your monoecious fluke. Let, uh, let us begin with your uh, Paragonimus Westermanni, your lung fluke. Okay, your Paragonimus Westermanni is the causative agent of uh, Paragonimiasis. Paragonimiasis, also known as your lung fluke disease. It is the causative agent also of your endemic hemoptysis. Endemic hemoptysis, your pulmonary dystomiasis, and your parasitic hemoptysis. Okay, your parasitic hemoptysis. Okay. <clears throat> now, at present, your paragonimus westermani, otherwise known as your oriental lung fluke, okay, also known as your oriental lung fluke, okay, it is the main species that causes human infection, particularly paragonimi uh, paragonimiasis in this country, okay, here in the Philippines. Although, aside from your Paragonimus westermani, uh, there are other two species that is very common here in the Philippines, namely Paragonimus philippinensis, okay, and your Paragonimus siamensis, okay. So, uh, we have three common species na nagkakos ng Paragonimiasis. We have your uh, Paragonimus westermani, your philippinensis, and your uh, siamensis, okay. Now, the patient infected with this kind of parasitic infection, they usually um, complain, okay, ang pinaka-common na complaint nila is uh, respiratory uh, symptoms like dry cough, ano pa. They usually manifest hemoptysis also, okay. And then, the clinical manifestations are said to be very similar with those seen in uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, okay? That is the reason why <clears throat> with this kind of parasitic infection, okay, uh, patients with this kind of paras uh, parasitic infection, they are often misdiagnosed with uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Now, let us go over with the morphology of your Paragonimus westermani. The ova of this parasite Okay, it is usually oval in shape and yellowish brown in color. Okay, yellowish brown in color. And then it has a, a very thick shell measuring about 80 to 118 micrometer by 48 to 60 micrometer. Okay, so this ova, it measures about 80 to 118 micrometer by 48 to 60 micrometer, okay? And aside from that, it has a flattened but prominent operculum. It has a flattened but uh, prominent operculum. And then the opposite of the operculum, it has a thick abopercular portion, okay? So, uh, anterior end lang ng operculum ng egg natin, it has a ab um, abopercular portion, okay? Abopercular portion, now, the egg of the Paragonimus westermani, it is usually immature when laid, okay, with a germ cell and many yolk cells when it is uh, being oviposited. Now, the adult fluke naman, okay, it, uh, it is uh, reddish brown in color. The adult fluke of Paragonimus, it is uh, reddish brown in color. And uh, it measures about uh, 7 to 12 micrometer in length. 7 to 12 uh, micrometer in length, 4 to 6 uh, micrometer, 4 to 6 micrometer in width, and 3 to 5, 3 to 5 millimeter in diameter. Okay? The adult fluke, it is usually rounded anteriorly and slightly tapered at the posterior end. Okay? And then the teg uh, tegument covering of the adult fluke, it is covered with single space spine okay it is covered with single spaced 
spines. Now, this parasite or this fluke, considering that they are monoecious, okay, or digenetic form, uh, both the female and male sexual organ, uh, you can, uh, they are uh, both fa uh, found in a single adult flu. Okay, yung male and female sexual organs ng parasite na ito. Okay, now the 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 adult flu it comprises of two testes, and then the testes are deeply lobed and are situated opposite each other. Okay, I think nasa handout niyo yan. You can read it na lang. Okay, and then the testis is almost located midway between the ventral sucker and the posterior border of the body. Okay, now on the other hand, the ovary is located anterior to the testis and posterior to the ventral sucker. Okay, now the adult fluke of the Paragonimus westermanni, it can exist in two form. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na active state. Okay, active state and preserved state. Okay, so the adult flu of Paragonimus westermanni, it can exist in either active state or preserved state. Okay, now these uh, two forms of Paragonimus westermanni, these two forms of uh, adult flu, it is very easy to distinguish between the two. Madali lang ma-differentiate yan just by comparing their appearance. Okay. Now, your uh, Paragonimus westermanni, when it is in active state, it usually appears to be resembling like a spoon shape. Okay, spoon shape in appearance. Okay, with one contracted end and then the other end is said to be elongated. Okay, now while the preserved state of the adult fluke, it is usually oval, flattened, and it resembles a coffee bean shape in appearance. Now, the adult worm, uh, they are found in pairs or in three in fibrotic capsules or cysts in the lungs of the host. Okay? So, once na uh, makapag-infect yan ng isang person, saan sila magre-reside, syempre dun sa lungs ng uh, host natin. Okay? And then, this adult worm, they are usually found particularly in the fibrotic capsules, okay? forming now a uh, cyst sa lungs ng definitive host. Okay? Now, this capsule, yung tinatawag nating fibrotic capsule, meron niyang opening. Okay? These openings will now allow the eggs to escape into the respiratory tract where they are moved up and, up and out via ciliary movement along with the lung exudates. Okay? So, pwede silang makalabas dun sa respiratory tract natin kasi merong opening yung uh, fibrotic capsules made by your uh, parasite. Okay? Now, once na makalabas sila sa respiratory tract, possible na makapunta sila sa uh, pharynx ng isang tao. Okay? <clears throat> Now, once na nandyan na sila, they are either coughed out, okay? pwede silang ma-expel through coughing, Or it can be swallowed. Okay, pwede silang malunok ulit ng definitive host natin. Okay, and then pag nalunok yan, saan yan mapupunta? It will go into the alimentary canal. Okay, sa digestive system, alimentary canal. And then later on, it can be uh, passed out in the feces. Okay, that is the reason why your Paragonimus westermanni, hindi lang siya makikita sa sputum, but possible din siyang ma-recover from fecal sample because of the uh, migration of this parasite. Now, let us, uh, let us discuss the life cycle of your Paragonimus westermanni. Okay, let us discuss the life cycle of your Paragonimus westermanni. Okay, now, number one siyan, okay, for example, or rather, imagine niyo nakalabas na yung uh, egg ng Paragonimus westermanni sa outside environment. Okay, so we have your immature ova. Again, we mentioned a while ago that the ova of your Paragonimus westermanni, it is usually immature. Immature yan kapag lumabas yan sa, or it is, um, Uh, kapag na tama, if it is oviposited, it is usually immature pa. Okay? Because the embryonation or the maturation 
uh, will take place in a moist environment dapat. Okay, so this immature egg, okay, it will undergo embryonation in water, in moist soil, or pwede rin sa feces in the external environment. Okay, so dapat, sa, uh, dapat conducive yung environment ng ova natin para mag-undergo yan ng embryonation. Okay? And then, after embryonation, okay, it will now proceed or it will now develop into miracidium. Okay? So, immature ova, need niya pang mag-embryonation, embryonate, it will embryonate in the external environment, okay, developing now into miracidium. <clears throat> Now, the miracidium, the development of miracidium, it usually takes around 2 uh, to 7 weeks. Okay? It develops within 2 to 7 weeks. After which, it, uh, it subsequently pushes the operculum. Okay? So, lalabas siya dun sa egg ng paragonimus. And then, after which, pag nag-open na yung operculum, lalabas yan. And it will swim freely in search of its appropriate snail host. Okay? So, lalabas siya sa water, tapos hahanapin niya yung kanyang first intermediate host. Okay? Lalabas si Miracidium, it will swim freely in search for its first intermediate host. And what are these first intermediate host of your parasite? These are namely your antemalanya. Andemalanya aspirata, formerly known as your brosha, your brosha aspirata. And meron pa siyang isang common na first intermediate host na makikita dito sa Philippines, which is your Andemalanya dactylus. Okay, so these are the first intermediate host snail of your Paragonimus westermani. <clears throat> okay. Now, anong next na mangyayari once na nakapasok na siya sa kanyang first intermediate host? Okay? While, uh, once inside the snail, the miracidium passes through, okay? Passes through one sporosis, okay? Mag-develop yan into one sporosis and then later, uh, dalawang stages ng radial stages, one sporosis and then two radial stages, Okay? <coughs> It will undergo development into one sporosis and two radial stages. <clears throat> and then, anong mangyayari after this development will take place? Okay, ang susunod dyan is it will develop into cercaria. Okay, it will develop into cercaria. And then, after which, this cercaria, lalabas ulit yan from the snail. It will emerge from the snail to seek and affect a second intermediate host. Okay, lalabas na yung cercaria natin ulit para makapag-infect na ng kanilang second intermediate host. And what are the second intermediate hosts of your Paragonimus westermani? Ito na ngayon yung ating freshwater crabs and crayfish. Now, the cercaria, the cercaria will, um, Penetrate now the soft parts of the crustacean host, yung mga crab natin, okay? And then, it will undergo encystation, okay? It will undergo encystation, it will establish itself hanggang sa mag-develop yan into metacercaria, okay? Your metacercaria now, okay, it is now said to be the infective stage for the definitive host. Yan na ngayon yung uh, infective stage for the definitive host. Tayo yon yung mga human. Okay? So, yan na yung uh, infective stage para sa atin. Your meta cercaria. Okay? Now, the definitive host will acquire the infection by ingesting uh, raw or insufficiently cooked crabs or any crustaceans harboring this meta cercaria. Okay? Now, following ingestion of an infected crustacean by the definitive host, the metacercaria will undergo excystation. Okay? It will undergo excystation. It will undergo excystation in the duodenum of the host. And then, uh, magde-develop yan into adolescent. Adolescent worm. Okay? Yung metacercaria natin, it will 
uh, develop into adolescent worm. And then, anong gagawin ng worm na ito, class? Okay, they will traverse through the intestinal wall into the peritoneal cavity. And then, later on, it will embed itself into the abdominal wall for several days. Okay, so mag-stay pa sila doon ng ilang araw. And then, this parasite will undergo migration. Magmamigrate yan saan? Okay, possibly sa diaphragm. Okay, doon siya pupunta sa diaphragm. And then, from there, it will now go to the pleural cavity where it penetrates the lungs. Okay, so pupunta na siya sa lungs. <coughs> It will establish itself into the lungs, and then dun na sila magistay hanggang magdevelop sila into adult worm. Okay. Now the adult worm is known to known to persist in humans for as long as twenty years or more. Okay. So kaya nilang makapag survive sa isang definitive host for as long as twenty years or higit pa. Okay. For your Paragonimus westermani. Again, what is the infective stage for your Paragonimus westermani? Meta cercaria. Now let us go over with the different clinical infections caused by your parasite. Okay. Now in the lungs, the parasite can cause granulomatous reaction. Okay. The la ah the parasite causes a granulomatous reaction. That gradually proceeds to the development of fibrotic encapsulation. Okay, it will lead to the for um formation or rather development of fibrotic encapsulation. Although the early stages now of paragonimiasis is said to be asymptomatic. Okay, the patient are said to be asymptomatic. However, in heavy infections, the patient may initially suffer from ah different respiratory. Uh, symptoms like dry cough, ano pa, uh, they will later on produce uh, rust-colored sputum. Okay? The patient may produce rust-colored sputum. Okay? This rust-colored sputum is accompanied with a char characteristic of foul, fishy odor. Okay? Now, chest pain, difficulty in breathing, and hemoptysis are also frequent symptoms of paragonimiasis. Okay, and then these signs and symptoms along with low-grade fever, uh, fatigue, and generalized um, myalgia, okay, uh, they can lead to the misdiagnosis of TB. Kasi halos pareho lang sila ng uh, clinical manifestations. Okay. Now, when chronic cough is present, it is commonly confused with chronic bronchitis. Pwede siya mapagkamalan as bronchitis, okay? bronchial asthma, or even bronchiectasis. Okay? Now, the uh, worst uh, cases of paragonimiasis, okay? cerebral involvement, okay? Cerebra, uh, cerebral involvement, cerebral involvement is said to be the most serious complication. Most serious complication of human paragonimiasis. Okay? Bakit? Kasi yung parasite natin, the migration of the adult worm to the brain may cause Jacksonian epilepsy. We call it Jacksonian epilepsy. Okay? Uh, it may also cause cerebral hemorrhage. Okay? Cerebral hemorrhage, even edema. It can cause edema to the patient. <coughs> edema to the patient. Ano pa? It uh, it can also result to visual impairment or visual disturbances and even meningitis. Okay. Now severe headache, mental confusion, and paresis of varying degrees may also occur in cases of uh, paragonimiasis with cerebral involvement. Now, for the laboratory diagnosis of Paragonimus is uh, Westermani, okay, number one is we can make use of radiographs, okay. Um, this x-ray, uh, it may use as an aid in the diagnosis, although it is very difficult to differentiate it from uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, okay. However, uh, typical x-ray finding is a ring 
shadowed opacity. Okay, pag nakita natin itong result ng x-ray na ito, it is a uh, diagnostic of Paragonimus westermani. Okay, uh, typical x-ray finding is a ring shadowed opacity okay, comprising several contiguous cavities that gives the appearance of bunch of grapes. Okay. So, a characteristic of Paragonimus westermani is the finding of ring-shadowed opacity with appearance of bunch of grapes of the lungs, of course, sa X-ray findings. Okay? And then another, we have, we can also perform direct examination. Direct examination of what? Of our sputum sample, fecal sample, or even aspirate material from lung abscess or pleural cavities. I mean, plural effusion. Okay, direct examination. Okay, we can make use of it as a definitive, a def, a definitive test. Okay, so definitive diagnosis is based on the detection of eggs pa din. Okay, kumbaga yan ang pinaka uh, the best na uh, test na gamitin natin. Direct examination, of course. Okay, definitive diagnosis is based on the detection of eggs in the sputum sample, fecal sample, or even aspirate material from lung abscess or pleural effusion. Okay, now if you're going to uh, make use of sputum sample, okay, kapag sputum yung sample na natanggap mo, digestion of sputum is required. Okay, you, uh, you have to digest it uh, by using an equal amount of 3% sodium hydroxide. Okay, you digest it by using 3% sodium hydroxide and then followed by standing. Okay, after digesting it with 3% sodium hydroxide, you left it uh, standing. And then after which, you centrifuge your sample. Okay, centrifugation. Okay, and then you collect the sediment. And then the entire sediment must be examined carefully before declaring the specimen as negative. Okay? <clears throat> For a more precise result, okay, or more accurate result, you can uh, request for a repeat collection if you want kung yung unang sample mo is nag-negative. Okay? And another test, we can also make use of intradermal test. Intradermal test by detecting... Um, Antibody against Paragonimus westermani. Okay, your intradermal test, the best yan na gagamitin when uh, screening patient. Okay, so it, it is very helpful to screen patient. However, it does not differentiate it between past and present infection. Okay, then aside from this one, we can, uh, serologic tests are already available. Okay, including your complement fixation. Complement fixation, meron na rin tayong enzyme immunoassay and immunoblot assay. Okay, immunoblot. <clears throat> now, for the prevention and control of paragonimiasis is madali lang, okay? Cook the crab meat sufficiently and adequately, okay? And then avoid contaminating the kitchen utensils when preparing crustaceans, okay? And then for the treatment, for the treatment of this parasitic infection, always the treatment of choice or drug of choice for trematode infection is always Traziquantel. Okay, always drug of choice natin yan. Okay, it serves as the drug of choice because it is highly effective in the treatment of trematode infections, particularly uh, the lung fluke infection. Okay. Aside from praziquantel, we also have bitayonol. Bitayonol is used as an alternative drug. Okay? And then aside from this two, meron din tayong tinatawag na triclabendazole. Your triclabendazole has re uh, recently been shown to be an effective drug against Paragonimus westermani.